friends, I am coming to you today from the special remote location of my attic uh, to do something kind of different and weird. It's, it's a haul video. People on YouTube do haul videos, right? Like that's, that's a thing. But as with most things I do, um, it's going to be a little bit unusual. Because instead of doing a haul of like makeup I bought or stuff that I picked up from Target, I am going to do a haul of a bunch of random items that I found in my childhood home. Because right now I am clearing out my mom's house to get it ready to sell and <laughs> She was a little bit of a hoarder. Not TLC reality show level hoarder, but like it definitely wasn't good. So she pretty much held on to everything from my childhood as well as a bunch of other weird stuff. So I am going to share with you some of the stuff that I have acquired and is now <laughs> filling up my attic. It's a little bit more of a self-indulgent video than I usually do because it's not examining like something in the media. It's not examining a commercial or a TV show or a movie or a song. Um, it's me showing you a bunch of like random crap. <laughs> uh, hopefully for those of you who also grew up in the 90s, seeing some of these old toys will be kind of fun. Um, and if not, at least there's some weird stuff to hopefully keep you entertained. All right, let's get started. The first item I want to share with you is the giant sweater that I'm wearing. This is a women's small. Look at this, like, my arm is up here. This is a giant sweater, but it's not the bigness of the sweater that is its strangest quality. It is the design on the sweater. And I'm going to try to take a separate video or photo of the sweater to make sure that you can fully see what's happening on here. Because there are like, I don't know how close I can get to the camera. I don't have one of those screens that flips around for me to see like how everything is framed. Um, there are cave people, cave men and women. Uh, one is like riding a dinosaur. Um, one down here has a coconut. This one over here is just like jumping. Uh, the sun, I don't know. Yeah, my hair's not blocking it. The sun is winking, of course. Uh, that's how things went in prehistoric times. Um, there's one that has like a, where are you? Okay, this one down here, there's a stegosaurus at the bottom of this sweater. Um, but this one has like a, what looks like a sword? I don't know, they definitely didn't have swords during the cavemen era, but who am I to question the historical accuracy of this sweater? Um, what I would like to point out to you <laughs> is the fact that these cave people are slightly anatomically correct. Um, it's most obvious on this one over here, who's just like, wee, that, uh, if you look under this little fuzzy skirt thing, um, you can, you can see a very specific appendage. So I am very excited about this sweater and I can't wait till it's winter so I can wear this giant unflattering sweater in public and just confuse every single person that I meet. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen another sweater that had these like Raggedy Ann and Andy type of dolls knitted on the front and they were both looking very intently off in one direction. Um, I did not bring that sweater home with me because I just didn't like the idea of falling asleep knowing it was somewhere in the house, that those dolls were just here staring, waiting.
So <laughs> we're getting off to a strong start. Now, what I was most excited to find in my mom's house were my old Power Rangers figurines. I loved these when I was a kid. And one thing that's kind of weird about memory and your perspective as a child versus your perspective as an adult is I remember these action figures as being huge. Like I thought they were gigantic, but now looking at them as an adult, like they're, they're a pretty normal size. I was just looking at them from the perspective of somebody who was like three and a half feet tall. I don't know. I don't know how tall I was as a child. I'm five, two now. So I just kind of subtracted some feet off of that. Um, the thing that is disappointing about these figurines is that I could not find the pink ranger who was my favorite ranger. I ripped the shed where I found these. I just like ripped it apart looking for the pink ranger and I could not find her. So Kimberly is just lost to the ages. And also these are not like new in the box. Uh, my mom just saved the boxes and put them back in the boxes when I was done playing with them because she was really weird. The next random item is something that I got in the mail as a child. Um, I had written a letter to one of my favorite childhood celebrities and that celebrity wrote me back and sent me um, a photo of themselves. So <laughs> can you guess what celebrity that is? You're not, you're not gonna be able to guess it, but you can, you can try. Post right now in the comments um, who you think this is gonna be. And you're probably wrong because it's Wishbone. Do you guys remember Wishbone, this dog? who had like an inner narrative and he would read books and he would go on adventures. Oh, there's a description on the back. Hmm. Um, I also got a letter from Wishbone. <laughs> it's from Wishbone. So Wishbone apparently wrote me this letter. Dear Wishbone fan, hello. Thanks for writing. A letter like yours really makes my tail wag. I have enclosed a pawtographed, paw, paw, oh, pawographed photo of me just for you. I thought you might want to know a little bit about me, so below I have told you about some of my favorite things. I have also enclosed a pawographed photo of me just for you. That was not me messing up. They included that sentence twice in the intro paragraph. But um, Wishbone is a dog, and I assume that his English language skills, despite his you know interest in literature, um, that perhaps when communicating directly via letter with a human, his his English might you know be faulty a little bit. Yeah, I mean this is a multi paragraph letter from Wishbone, um, inviting me to join the Wishbone Zone fan club. Wishbone Zone? Bone Zone? I feel like that's an expression for things that um, I would not have been aware of at this age as a child. So, you know, this was my brush with fame. I, um, I was very weird that I wrote a letter to a television dog. And I've got this purple thing. What could it be? Could it be? Oh, my timing didn't quite work out on unfurling this. It's a popple! Does anyone else remember popples? I could have sworn I had a second popple that was larger and blue, but it's lost to the ages. Um, I vaguely remember popples. I loved this toy. I think there was a cartoon but they would like curl up into those little balls and you kind of unfurl them and it's this creature, yay! Turtles in the half shell, turtle power! Uh, my Ninja Turtles. I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, probably unsurprising 
if you consider my love of the Power Rangers. Uh, is this April O'Neil? Is this... I'm assuming this is April O'Neil, but she is in a weird outfit, and she doesn't have... I could have sworn April has red hair. Hold on, I have an April O'Neil action figure somewhere here. Again, not new in the box. My mom kept the box and put April back in the box. I could have sworn April had kind of reddish hair. She does in the, the pictures that are on this box, but her action figure, which has full on crazy eyes, uh, she has light brown hair. So let me, let me put my turtles down. By the way, um, Raphael was my favorite turtle. I'm trying to be engaging, so tell me your favorite Ninja Turtle in the comments below. And if you don't have a favorite Ninja Turtle, tell me your favorite um, Renaissance sculptor or painter that the turtles are named after. Okay, so um, April O'Neil. I feel like I have dust like all over my face. April. Action figure that I'm not sure if it's April. I I don't know if it's focusing because I can't see anything. So is it you tell me. What does it look like? Um April O'Neil. I liked many characters whose last names were O'Neill. <laughs> Age! A young 25. Oh my god. Wow. Birthplace is the valley. She's five foot five and weighs 115 pounds. Why would I, as a child, need to know the exact height and weight of April O'Neil? Oh my god. April's a determined TV news journalist, always prepared for the late breaking news feature with her camcorder strapped round her arm. Her eagerness, however, gets her into trouble and makes her a big pain in the shell for the turtles, who always end up saving this damsel in distress. I liked the character of April O'Neil, and I could have sworn that she had more of like an action-oriented role and she wasn't just a damsel in distress, but it's been years. Still, April's no airhead and is a valuable member of the turtle team. Being a pretty human has its advantages, like getting into places the turtles can't. When the situation calls for more than a news flash, April's ready with a trusty gun, which is secretly locked inside her camcorder. Oh my god. Do they say turtle power, or is that just something that my brain is churning out that's like literally meaningless? All right, um, this horse, I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it's from. I have no idea if it's a brand. I'm looking for markings, but I don't see anything. But I loved this horse because it had this like ombre thing happening and it's, um, it's not so glittery now. The glitter just looks like weird specks, but it was like kind of sparkly, so. There you go. Huh. I actually found a bunch of old My Little Ponies. I remember that I gave a lot away to my cousin um, when I was kind of aging out of these and she was the appropriate age. But I really liked this one for some reason, so I decided to keep it. She's got the little strawberry there. I never got into the newer My Little Pony. I never really got into that craze, but I really liked the older My Little Pony. I have multiple Catwoman figurines. I loved Catwoman. I was obsessed with her. Um, she was my favorite. I guess you can't really call her a superhero. She's not quite a villain. She's not quite an anti-hero. Um, I don't know how Catwoman is defined, but I loved her. And I am very disappointed that in a lot of the um, adaptations of Batman that we've seen that have included Catwoman. I just don't think she's right. I don't think we got the right kind of Catwoman vibe. Like Michelle Pfeiffer was good, but she was a little bit too crazy. I didn't like Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. Um, the old Adam West Batman show, the Eartha Kit was pretty good. Uh, but you know, that was 
the Adam West Batman show. Uh, by the way, my greatest dream in all of these, like, superhero media renaissance shows that are happening right now, my greatest dream that I know will never happen is I want a reboot of specifically the Adam West Batman with Paul Rudd. And it's never gonna happen because he's Ant-Man, like, Disney Marvel owns him, but that's still my dream. But I would settle for getting a good uh, representation of Catwoman. I will withhold my judgment on um, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman until I've seen that movie. She's got the right look, like she's got the right features, but I just, I've seen the costume, I've seen photos of the costume that she has, and it's just like, I want, I want this, I want this. I don't know what this is an action figure of. She's got like, like a tail kind of thing. I have no idea what this is, but I really liked it because she kind of reminded me of Catwoman. So, you know. All right, it's time for another weird item that I acquired. This, this dish. What, what is this? I don't know how well the camera can focus on things, but let's, let me show it to you a piece at a time, okay? There's whatever's happening on the lid here, like these little baby cherub creatures having some sort of fun time, um, playing music. They've got some like grass or some grains there. But the thing that I find most interesting are these figures on the bottom. I just felt it up. Um, clearly, they have breasts, bare breasts. The, it, it just doesn't match the theme of the rest of the bowl. Like what, are they mermaids? I don't understand because they have this kind of tail-like thing. They don't have feet, um, but it's covered in a leaf. So I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at and what's happening with their arms. Look at, look at that. I have no idea what they're supposed to be. I have no idea what this is. Um, the only markings it's got, it says on the bottom, there's like gold that says 2160. That's the only marker on this. And that is not enough for me to go on a Google hunt to figure out what this is <laughs> to figure out what this is supposed to be representing, but I kept it and I'm gonna display it in my home. Um, another thing that I found, I actually found a lot of these um, in different areas of my mom's house because it's chaos. Comic books, just a ton of old comic books. A Zorro comic. Was Zorro originally a comic? Because I remember there was an old black and white Zorro TV series that I used to love, but now I'm wondering if Zorro started out as a comic. Um, I'm not super familiar with the history of Zorro. You know I'm gonna look it up after this though. Just lots. Look at that man, whew. Horse dead till proven alive. All right. Extra, a Robin solo story. Concentration camp for adults only. Oof. Oh my God. Mr. Miracle, super escape artist. Also meet Granny Goodness. She reaches out of this world to make deadly little things like the X-Pit. The Phantom Stranger. Captain America, when wakes the sleeper? I have no idea if any of these things hold any sort of value. I just, I just kept them because, you know. Forever people, aren't they making a movie about them? Or did I um, imagine that? My hands feel so gross touching all this stuff. Yeah, this is, um, this is a bag of Forever People comics. All right. I don't think these are from my childhood. I don't know when these are from. I'm trying to find dates on some of this stuff. Cause it just says May 7th, but there's not a year. 
It was 20 cents though. Remote you control, life-size ghost. Special, $1. Oh, this one's 1972, yet yeah, well before my time. Uh, I do feel like The New Adventures of Disney's Beauty and the Beast was probably my time. Good old Barbie. Conan the Barbarian. There's also a good amount of Mad Magazines in here. Part of me is slightly paranoid that I'm going to hold up something that's incredibly valuable and then put myself at risk of uh, home invasion and burglary. I'm being carried off by the beast that walks like a man. Les Miserables, the comic book. If there's anything that I've shown you here that you would like me to read or um, go through more closely in a totally separate video, just let me know in the comments and I'll probably do that because I have all this stuff now and I got to do something with it. I found some books that I have no recollection of ever reading. And let me tell you just the utmost disappointment here. On the back of this book, it says that there are three Power Rangers books and one of them is called The Terror Toad. And that sounds amazing. And I have three books here. So I thought, okay, one of these must be The Terror Toad. No, Power Rangers, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No Terror Toad. I'm sure that that is just, again, lost to the ages. I have, I have no recollection of ever reading these books. Um, but I did start flipping through Rita's Revenge and the writing is hilarious. When Zordon heard of Rita's escape, he put his master plan into action. He called Alpha 5, the robot running his command center on Earth. Teleport us to five of the wildest, most willful humans in the area, he commanded. No, Alpha 5 said. Not teenagers. Beautiful, beautiful writing. The uh, Sailor Moon healing wand. I suddenly forgot the actual name of it, but I'm sure the knowledge is somewhere in my brain. Uh, missing the Silver Imperium Crystal, unfortunately. So if Queen Beryl comes to Earth, uh, we're all screwed. I have truly, I remember playing with these toys. I distinctly remember playing with them, but I truly have no idea what these are supposed to be. I don't know if the camera, I don't know if it'll focus. What is that? What, what is that? Is that some sort of giraffe warrior? I have no idea. This one is some sort of gorilla. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I don't know why they have these little square things on their chest. I feel like it was a little solar panel. What that solar panel would do, I don't know. This one appears to be a fox. I don't know if the camera is focusing on these. I don't know if I'm straight up just messing up the focus overall. Um, I'm winging it. Oh, this one's an elephant. But contrary to the animal kingdom, he is roughly the same size as all of the others. So, wait, what's that one? Is that a frog? Uh, it's, yeah, I think it's like warrior frog. Beautiful. I have so much stuff here. I have um, Stargate Atlantis fan art that my best friend drew uh, because I tried to get her into Stargate and she liked Atlantis more than SG-1. So I, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. A ton of old Hallmark keepsake ornaments that I'm not really gonna go through, but I remember them from my childhood. A Care Bear. I forget which one this is, but does he say on his tag? Oh, the tag's really faded. Yeah, I don't know, it doesn't say. But still, Care Bear, I loved this thing. I had other Care Bears, at least one other Care Bear. Where that, where that Care Bear is, I have no idea. I feel like this is probably for incense or this has some sort of purpose, perhaps. Um, but it obviously looks like the magic lamp from Aladdin, hence uh, my deciding to keep it. I think that's going to be it for now. I have a ton more stuff. I also found um, my old Stargate DVD box sets 
that I had left at my mom's house during my last move. I had forgotten a box of stuff there, um, and then she, she packed it away, but I found it. So I have my DVDs, and I think most of my Atlantis DVDs were in there as well. So maybe at some point I can embark on an Atlantis rewatch. Thank you for joining me as I went through some of this old stuff. Hopefully it was mildly entertaining. I've got to sort through all of it. I'm gonna go wash my hands now. Yay!